My name is David, and the chronological Bible reading for September 16th is Daniel chapters 7 through 9. In chapter 7, Daniel retells the vision that he had of four beasts. They came up from the sea, and in prophetic writings, the sea represents the masses of humanity or the nations of the Gentiles. The first was like a lion, but it had eagle's wings. It was fierce and strong, and the wings represent not only being able to move quickly, but also having a higher up perspective. It was lifted up from the ground, set on its feet, and given given the mind of a human. This is a reference to the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. The second beast looked like a bear, and it was raised up on one side, showing an imbalance of power. This is the Medo-Persian empire that replaced Babylon. History tells us about the conflicts between the Medes and the Persians and how the Persians overcame them. The third beast was like a leopard with four wings, incredibly fast. Historians tell us how quickly and unexpectedly Alexander the Great advanced, conquering everything in his way. But then he suddenly lost his life unexpectedly, and his kingdom was split into four. The fourth beast is entirely different from all of the rest. It was frightening and dreadful, incredibly strong with large iron teeth, and it had ten horns. This is the Roman Empire, which secular history tells us crumbled, but it was never really replaced by a dominant world power. What if the Roman Empire is still in operation, although not overtly? What if it's covert? And it has to do with the Roman Catholic Church and the deep state cabal. Notice that as Daniel continued watching in verse 9, thrones were set in place. The Ancient of Days took his seat. Court was convened and the books were opened. This refers to judgment. As this fourth beast was still in power, the transition goes directly to Jesus returning and judgment coming upon all of humanity. Daniel continued watching and saw one like the Son of Man coming in the clouds. He approached the Ancient of Days and was escorted before him. He was given dominion and glory and a kingdom so that those of every people, nation, and language should should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. Clearly, this is a reference to Jesus sitting down at the right hand of the Father. We are continuing to see the remnant of the Roman Empire work through institutionalized religion, through control of the financial systems, pulling strings behind all of the world governments, and forcing its demonic agenda upon the world through covert means. In verse 21, Daniel shares this beast, the fourth beast, this horn representing one of the leaders, waged war against the holy ones and was prevailing over them until the Ancient of Days arrived and judgment was given. And then the holy ones took possession of the kingdom. The angel tells Daniel the interpretation of the dream in verse 23 and following. This last beast will devour the whole earth, trample it down, and devour it. He will speak words against the Most High and wear out the holy ones of the Most High. He will intend to change religious festivals and laws, and the holy ones will be turned over to him for a time, times, and half a time. Most scholars would agree that that's a reference to a year plus two years, plus a half a year, equaling three and a half years. And some people believe that this is a reference to the last half of the tribulation period in which three and a half years will be spent as hell on earth. But a time doesn't necessarily mean one year. It could be a millennium. It could be a century. It just means period of time. So let's hold all of that loosely. If all of this is discouraging and scary to you, keep reading. Verse 26 says, But court will be convened, his dominion will be taken away, and greatness of the kingdoms under all of heaven will be given to the holy ones of the Most High, that's you and me. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will serve and obey him. Chapter 8 zeroes in more closely on the vision of the ram 
and the goat Daniel had. The ram represents the Medo-Persian Empire, and the goat is another reference to Alexander the Great and what he did in conquest for Greece. We know this because Daniel is given the interpretation right there in chapter 8, verses 20 and 21. Keep in mind, this angel gives Daniel this interpretation. He writes it down 300 years before it took place. Most who study Daniel chapter 8 believe that the last half of the chapter is talking about Antiochus Epiphanes, who did come to power after Alexander the Great when the kingdom of Greece was split into four and he waged war against the Jews from 171 to 165 BC, give or take. This correlates to the 2300 evenings and mornings referenced in verse 14. 2300 on a 360 day prophetic calendar would equate to six years, four months and 20 days. In Daniel 9, he prays, asks God to end the exile as Jeremiah had prophesied he would. And the angel is dispatched to Daniel and tells him, because you are treasured, God is answering your prayer. There's a prophecy about 70 weeks, 62 weeks, and 7 weeks. It can be pretty confusing, and I'm not sure anybody really understands all of it. But what we do know is in verse 25, he says to Daniel, Know and understand this, from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, until an anointed one, the ruler, or a prince, will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. It will be rebuilt with a plaza and a moat, but in difficult times. Historians have calculated from the time that Cyrus, issued the decree to rebuild Jerusalem and Nehemiah went there under fierce oppression the Jews were rebuilding the city wall with a sword in one hand while they worked with the other it was incredibly difficult but from the time that decree was issued a clock was set in motion that was perfectly fulfilled by Jesus Christ on the day of his triumphal entry when he entered the streets of Jerusalem riding on a foal and the people cried out Hosanna in the highest. This book is fascinating and I wish we had more time to talk about it. If you have questions about specific verses or if you see anything I said in a different light, I would love to hear what you're thinking. Please comment and share and please let me know if you'd like to spend more time just on the prophecies in the book of Daniel in a separate study. God bless you. Thank you for being on this journey with me. We'll see you tomorrow.